almost a year of RV ownership, and if there's anything you folks have learned by watching us all this time, it's the fun, and I'll put fun in quotes, that we sometimes have backing the aluminum Falcon into campsites. Uh, although it has been better of late, uh, when we got back from our last trip and were putting the Falcon back into the backyard, and we had a little bit of trouble. I noticed uh, Jesse putting the number to a divorce lawyer in her speed dial, so I thought it was probably about time that I did something to try to make this situation better. So to that end, today we are going to unbox and install this puppy, the Furion Vision S Backup Camera Vehicle Observation System. Stay tuned. This is what we have. This is the Furion Vision S. This is backup vehicle observation system. Uh, this is the four and a third inch monitor. Um, Furion makes them in five and seven inch models also. I think those are for much larger vehicles than we have. Uh, you know, Furion makes everything for RVs, I mean, everything electronics, televisions and stereos and who knows what else. <laughs> Dig into it and see what the box contains. Oop, not everything. Hmm. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. Here we go. Documentation, instructions, you know, who reads those? And here we have, I guess this is probably the monitor, yes, this is your monitor. And what else do we have in here? I guess this is your suction cup mount. Yeah, there we go. You get him and you attach like so, and then it on the windshield. I guess this. All right, that's 12 volt power. That's for your. For, yeah, for the monitor. That's right. Okay. Well, no. Yes, that's right. Here you go. 12 volt into the into the dash. And then your power to the mic. Okay, I get it. I get it. I told you, who needs those instructions? And I guess this is extra wiring for the camera itself if you do not have a pre wired get up like we do. So we won't need this. Or uh, spares, whichever we want to look at it. Yeah, this is zip ties and some wire guides in case you have to wire it yourself, which we don't. And. Last but most important is the camera itself. Whoop! And again, this this has the housing. Uh, if you don't have a pre-wired setup, um, you'd have to install your, your rubber gasket base plate and then install the housing and then install the camera. But lucky us, we've already got that pre-wired, so I won't even need this or this. We'll just need the camera to snap in and the antenna. Not bad. Now comes the fun part, seeing if I can get it actually hooked up and working. Okay, here we are about to do the installation itself, and I wanted to just take a second to clarify. Now again, you can see our rig is pre-wired for this camera. Um, most RVs anymore are pre-wired for some brand of backup camera. I believe most of them are pre-wired for Furion cameras. Uh, I would think it very unlikely anybody purchasing an RV these days is going to come across a new RV is going to come across one that you would actually need the entire assembly. Um, so, uh, you know, I said this is an installation video. That's it's more like a plug-in video because really that's all you have to do with these things. Uh, the, the, they're already wired. The, the 
power wire is already, you know, the manufacturer did all that for you. All you have to do is find this end that's already in there uh, you know, and plug the, plug the camera into that end and then attach it to this that's already up there. So let's do that. And it is such a simple installation that it can be done with one screwdriver. Okay, you'll see you've got these screws that are just holding this plate into place. And if we just bear it carefully so as to not strip them or lose them because they're tiny little screws. I advise you to get a bucket or a, a bottle cap or something to put these little itty bitty screws into so you won't lose them like I'm trying to lose that one. Ha, but I didn't. <laughs> And then this plate should, should come right out. If I can figure out how to, there we go, catch it. And there she goes. Okay, let's get the closer eye back and I'll show you that you see this piece, he's already there. And there's some length of wire Although I really can't imagine why you would need any length at all, consider the assembly is gonna be flush against, but that's what you're looking for right there. Now the trick is once you have him inserted, good tight seal, and you want your antenna end up because there's your access for it. The trick is gonna be getting this length of cable tucked in there. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Now this is the trick with these tiny little screws. Stay. I kind of wish I had a magnetized screwdriver. I didn't even think about that beforehand. So once again, learn from my mistakes. And also have better eyesight than I do too. There we go. All right. All right, let's see if I can get the other three without losing any. Don't want to lose them, don't want to strip them. Oh, and if you're as blind as me, it might not hurt to have some kind of light source coming, <laughs> coming up so you can see the screw holes. All right, folks, I think well, I can go a little bit more. I think that's it. And the antenna, which I did not bring up here with me. Hang on. Antenna. Goes right up top. It just screws into place and be sure you leave yourself some kind of angle. There you go. And that should be a completed installation job. See, we've got our screws pretty much flush. Antennas upright, and the good folks Rockwood to put his housing in place for us. I think everything is sealed up good. We may need to reseal that at some point. That's getting a little dry and crackly. Yeah, but that's another project for another day. So all that being done, the next thing is to get Big Red the Tundra backed up close so we can connect power, you know, the, um, the seven pin umbilical and get power to him and pair up him wirelessly with the monitor in the cabin. Okay, as you see, Big Red is back in place. We are going to connect the umbilical and in theory, uh, that means that the vehicle's power, power in the running lights and since the camera is wired off of the same circuit the running lights uh, are powered by, then that should give power to the camera. Uh, I'm not seeing any visual cue on the camera showing it has power, so I'm just going to assume that'll be the, the case. So we'll, we'll connect, um, I'll crank him up, and then we'll get inside and hook up the monitor and assume that it'll see the monitor and 
and go from there. I believe right below the antenna, I think that's an indicator light. I can't be sure, but I'm hoping that's what that is. Let's crank up Big Red and see what we get. Here's our monitor. Of course, it came with the windshield mount. I'm wondering if we aren't going to try one of those beanbag dash mounts. I'm not quite sure where I'd like to have him. Of course, it's also got to have cable running to it. So I'm thinking maybe someplace like down low a little bit less obtrusive with the cable, but we'll figure that out later. But in the meantime, here we go. Let's see if we can get him powered up. Okay, he works. All right, no signal. So, let's see what the instructions say about getting a signal. Okay, cameras installed or plugged in. Uh, power uh, we have deduced that for that camera to get power, uh, apparently it is running off the running light circuit. So I must actually turn on the parking lights on this vehicle for the camera back there to gain power. So I'll show you. When we plug in monitor, you see no signal. Okay. But as soon as I hit parking lights on the vehicle, yep. Oop, there we go. Uh, uh, on my dry run, I paired it. So ordinarily what you would do is, you know, you see your controls down, down the side of the monitor. Um, there's your menu, and the very first one is pairing, and you would, well, it's already paired. <laughs> but it would you would get a display where you would see a graphical depiction of this monitor, and then a series of dots with a magnifying glass searching, and then a graphical indication of the camera. And it didn't take three seconds for them to see each other and they were paired and you get an image. Um, so uh, without having to actually, because we're not hitched up, so I can't really give you a, a, a demonstration right now. Um, we'll give you some footage for our next trip uh, when we make use of it. But th that's, I told you it was easy as pie, um, especially if you're pre-wired. And again, just about every RV sold anymore is pre-wired for some kind of backup camera. And uh, you, once you plug him in, and deduce what method <laughs> by which the camera gets power, um, then it's just, you know, getting them paired, and there you go. You can even, when you're backing up, you can even get, you know, guidelines like you have on some of your uh, in-dash backup camera uh, uh, user interfaces. So um, whether we make use of that or not remains to be seen. But uh, hopefully this will help save our marriage. <laughs>